Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout episode 179, Pixel Dust. That's right, today we're gonna to be looking at a giant LED sand toy. Mm -hmm. We'll take a look at some assistive tech. A dice roller. It's and, assistive tech. And then we'll take a look at wirelessly charging phones in your car. All this and more on, you guessed it, 3D Hangouts. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I'm Noel Ruiz, the designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is the person with the same glasses as I do. What's up everybody? I'm Paige Ruiz, Creative Tech here at Adafruit. And every week we're coming to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics, smash them together to make inspirational projects for the community. Howdy everybody in the chat rooms. We are live streaming on different networks. We're on Facebook, say hi on Facebook. We're on YouTube, chat's over there. We're also hanging out in the Discord chat room. We are also broadcasting on uh, Periscope and Twitch as well. So howdy everybody on the universe. We have a special coupon code today is, it's Matrix. It's, it's a nice easy one. Matrix is this week's coupon code. So you can use this and check out if you want to get anything in the Adafruit shop, you can get 10% off that order. Uh, this works on everything except for gift certificates and subscriptions. That's right. Yeah, let's run through the stuff in the show. We also have some freebie deals. This is uh, for folks that um, spend a little bit of extra money with us. You get some free stuff. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, you can see all the different tiers. If I go there right now, which I am doing, we can take a look at the website and it'll show you all the different tiers. For, one, for $99 or more, you'll get a free Adafruit Perma Proto half size the breadboard. $200 or more, you'll get UPS ground shipping. That's for continental US only. $299 more, and you'll get all that plus a Circuit Playground Express. You also have same day delivery for certain zip codes in the Manhattan area. And we have newsletters. Of course, we have the Adafruit Daily newsletter, which gives you a daily dose of content. You can check that out, adafruitdaily.com. You could also check out our once a week newsletter. This is product focused on Adafruit products. You can go to adafruit.com slash newsletter for that. I want to say hello to everyone in the chat room. We are live streaming. We live stream the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Give out some shout outs to folks in the chat room as we tweet away. Shout outs to Kitten Carnival, Lord Maze, Hello. City DIY, Liz Yoni. Clark in the chat room, hey. Kirby's in the chat. Yep, our moderator Kirby, Jim Scuba. What's up, buddy? Samuel Vipole. Thank you, everybody, for joining us every week. Yep. Let's cool. go ahead and jump into this week's really cool project. Let's do it. On the overhead, Pedro is showing off a very awesome project from Philip Burgess, aka Paint Your Dragon. This is our new 64 by 64 RGB LED matrix powered by an Adafruit bonnet, an Adafruit matrix bonnet, and the Raspberry Pi Zero. So there's all the stuff in the background. If you haven't already, check out the project video on YouTube. We also have a learning guide. We'll, we'll walk you through in just a moment. Uh, for now, we are just loving this, all this. Yeah, pixel dust. This 4,000 LEDs in this arrangement, and we can we can we're just gonna do this for the rest of the show. I'm just gonna sit here and show this. How heavy is this thing, Pedro? You know it's got what? some weight I to it. I have not weighed it, but it's not heavy at all. So this is uh, obviously 3D printed parts for the handles. We have the buttons on the side to control the mode and to switch to reset the simulation, specifically for this one right here. Go back. Yep, back. and we have a learning system with the guide. You can see it here. Mm -hmm. And it shows you all the parts you need to build it to make it portable. We're using the PowerBoost 1000C. 
that lets you plug in a LiPo battery like our beefy 6600 LiPo batteries. I don't see it photographed here, but it is a massive battery. Yeah, or it's it would not have linked thrown here off either. The, the feng shui of Yeah, the it's so clean shot. looking. How do you power this thing? Oh yeah, the battery. The battery is pretty huge, but hey, this is the, the back of the display. You can see it comes with this sort of framing, and it was really nice that this display had threaded um, holes and everything to make it run. This made it so a you can lot see in more the back easier here. to hold everything in place. Yeah, so yeah. everything is just mounted to the framing itself. The thumb screws, three millimeter thumb screws, come included with the 6464 matrix display, so that was very handy. Uh, just designed some countersink holes to hold all of these pieces together and then as well as the frames for the mounts and the battery. Everything yeah. nicely tucks away within the frame itself. And then we have our push buttons with the quick connects on there to make everything very modular. So you can reuse all of these to make, I don't know, some sort of like installation display. Or mm -hmm. These are normally used for making video walls. Yeah, and so you can actually the... chain all of these together. You look at the back, there are multiple pins and ports yeah. to connect uh, a bunch of these together. Here's again on the website, it's product ID 3649. I'll go ahead and paste that in the chat room for you guys. Do it in the Facebook chat as well. So Facebook oh, yeah, can see that, guys. it. Okay, cool. So yeah, if you go to the website, we do have it in stock. It's a little bit pricey because it's a very fine pitched uh, PCB. That means the spacing between the LEDs are very, very fine. 2.5 millimeter pitch with a 132 scan. This thing's nice. It does come with all the cables and stuff, so you can plug it right into the Raspberry Pi bonnet, which um, is right over here. What's wrong? Interesting thing, when you're looking at the product page, I forgot it came with those magnets. I have no idea what, what they're the for. Are for. I don't know. If you scroll up, you can oh, see, I see those two of them right there. I don't know. Maybe it's for uh, uh, attaching I don't things. even know where they went. <laughs> yeah, I forgot where I put them. Sorry. But yeah, we got the Matrix bonnet. It, it's obviously they're sold separately. Mm -hmm. but I like this the back of the bonnet there, the message that Phil B. No one can running. be told what the Matrix bonnet is. You have to see it for yourself. Hey, that's why the coupon code is Matrix. That's Just right. thought I'd th throw that out there. So with the coupon code, you can get 10% off this item. And of course, the very pricey, but very beautifully crafted LED Matrix. This thing's pretty awesome. Okay, so we got all those products, they're in stock, and let's go ahead and look at the demo again. Sorry, I'm just mesmerized <laughs> by the way that, the way that this trails off right here. Yeah, it looks it's like very something nice, in the yeah. way that it's like going through the I, actual. I really like the, um, the second demo. Actually, I like all the demos, they're all lovely. Yeah, this one's uh, really this cool This one too. really showcases uh, how you can sort of make obstacles, sort of games, that sort mm -hmm. of thing, maybe a, a labyrinth. Yeah. Um, with so a really cool marble labyrinth type thing. Okay, for theming, for brand yeah. theming, for whatever uh, now, event or... If you see a little bit of flicker or a little bit of refresh, that's refresh rate, rate, that's just the, the refresh, gate, refresh rate. Um, it works pretty well in most cases. In, the, in real human eye, obviously you can't see that. Yeah. It's just the camera that's doing that little bit of refresh rate. So it's kind of difficult to film it. Mm -hmm. uh, we were playing around with different shutter speeds and different ISOs and f-stops, but we've... Eventually figured it out and the webcam seems to pick it up okay. Yeah. All right, so how about uh, we take a look at the in. guide? Yeah. All right, cool. Let's walk through the guide. So if you go to learn.adafruit.com, you'll see this right on the homepage of learn.adafruit.com. Let's go ahead and pop that link in for you guys, make it easy on everybody. It's also in the description of the YouTube video. Check that out. Let's walk to the, the homepage. Just talks about it a little bit, all the parts you need, of course and some prerequisite guides if you need to take a look at those. But you could follow this guide um, to sort of stand alone. You will need some additional hardware screws. It does come with hardware screws, but you'll need some extra ones for the 3D printed parts, which we have them here. And um, we can find these on any, Anywhere, wherever yeah. you, you like to. All right, let's take a look at the circuit diagram. So you do have to wire up some things. We do have some buttons. Now the mate, the kind of the second hero of this pro okay, there's two heroes. You there's got the power a, there's boost. There's always a couple of heroes. Yeah, you got the power boost, which makes it portable. That's this board over here, right? So you plug in a, a battery into that, and then you can get a clean five volt signal to um, the barrel jack here, which plugs in right in top of the Pi bonnet. The accelerometer, this is the LIS-3DH accelerometer. It's a low cost, but pretty, pretty good, accurate 
accelerometer that is connected over I squared C using SDA, SCL. And then we have two buttons that are connected to the two spare GPIO pins on the top there. So everything is broken out in text form and visual, so you can see all the wired connections. We also have a switch over there. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the circuit. Am I missing anything? We don't show the Pi because the, it just snaps on top of the Pi. It's actually on the bottom layer there in the fritzing diagram. Mm, okay. And one other thing that I didn't know how to show is to flip it around to actually look at the pads that you need to uh, solder together to get the right. 64 by 64 to work together. But we'll look at that in the assembly. Yeah. Jump it into the code. Yeah, Phil my favorite did part. an awesome job of writing some auto scripts for this, as well as the excellent job on the Pixel Dust uh, demo libraries yeah. for this. Yeah, so the Pixel Dust library is its sort of standalone library that you can install. The first thing you want to do when you set up is the uh, the actual bonnet driver and matrix driver. So you can do that um, with this line of code here. This will run through, get it from our repository, and just install all the things uh, necessary to make the, the LED driver run with your Pi Zero or any other type of Pi. So we walk you through that. The second thing you want to do is to install Git. This is kind of assuming that you're running off a fresh installation of uh, Jesse Stretch Lite or the desktop version, whichever you like. I really like using the Lite version because it's a very small download. You really don't need the user, the desktop interface. So mm -hmm. I recommend using that. And then you can do a, a Git clone of the, the Pixel Dust uh, repo on the Adafruit GitHub page. Then you'll make some Pixel Dust using this command here. It just go into the right directory. Um, automatically, it'll just download to your Pi's home directory which is where we like to keep things nice and simple. Running the code is as simple as running a pseudo Python uh, there to the button script. The button script will um, map the GPIO pins to the buttons. And there you can update some flags. So you can change the LED brightness, which we definitely had to do for filming it. We mm -hmm. had to crank down that brightness below 50%. Super easy to do with a pseudo nano. You can just modify the buttons.python file. To do the automatic startup, it's as simple as editing the RC local file and then just adding uh, this line of code right before the exit zero line. So we walk through just about everything you need. We even have an extra little thing called safety shutdown setup. This is so you can safely power off the Pi without having to sudo, uh, without, without having to kind of uh, shut down the Pi uh, normally and clean, you can just kind of uh, flip the switch off and on if it's in read-only mode. But definitely recommend doing this only once you're done with the whole project and nothing else. Um, because once it's in read-only mode, it is irreversible. You'd have to reflash the card. So there'd be no way to adjust the brightness. After exactly. That. And that we mm -hmm. couldn't do it in this case because we had to constantly change the brightness because we were filming. Uh, we also have some customization options like I was saying above. Um, you can change the GPIO pin numbers or the LED brightness. Uh, you can even add more or less demos if you'd like as well. Um, that's all in the button Python script. But everything here is basically what you need to kind of start fresh. Um, so check that out. Some things worth investigating. Lamar had some ideas on using like a shake uh, mode to actually tap detect. Tap detect to yeah, actually get it yeah. to to, um, to switch modes or colors or brightness or something like that. But uh, just ran out of time and there was some mm -hmm. uh, complicated stuff in the code. If anybody wants to check that out. Yeah. Moving on to the 3D printing, the hero of these, the Ultimaker 2s, or any, actually any printer that has the ability to change um, nozzle sizes because these, uh, you know, they look kind of small, but they're actually pretty big and would take they're very large, yeah. four plus hours of print on a regular sized 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Yeah. So all the Ultimakers actually come with the Olsen block. Uh, nozzle kit, which means you get the 2.5 or 0 0.25, 0 0.4, 6, and 8 size nozzles. For this guy, we had to use the big old fat uh, 0.8 millimeter okay. nozzle. Yeah, so if you guys uh, haven't experimented yet with bigger nozzles and you have some projects this that have really big parts, you can speed up your print time with mm -hmm. this. And if quality doesn't matter, if the position, Actually, if the precision this... can be a little bit of slack, like these mounting holes, for example, they worked out excellent. Yeah. So you can get, so you can get pretty good resolution for mounting holes mm 
um, with a 0.8 nozzle. So that seemed to work well. So all of these parts are printed with a 0.8 nozzle? Uh, the handles uh, and the battery mount, the okay. sensor or the board mounts were printed with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And this dramatically uh, reduced the print time. So we went down from like five to six hours down to an hour. That's crazy. When I need to print two of these and I need to start filming uh, this is definitely a lifesaver. Yeah. So anybody who has the ability to change nozzles and you are working with a big print, and you're on a deadline, <laughs> crunch time's coming up, definitely consider uh, making sure that yeah. your tolerances work across uh, different nozzle sizes. Yeah. You have to play around with your settings, of course. With any new nozzle change, you'll have to play with uh, the Luckily, line width. The, yes. Yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. So we have all that listed here uh, in our slice settings. So you can see what we use. We use a 0.7 extrusion width to go with our 0.8 nozzle. Again, these are settings for a 0.8 nozzle. They will vary depending on your printer and your setup. And you were able to print pretty fast at 100 millimeters a second. Normally, you have to crank that down to like 30 or 40, especially with a one millimeter nozzle. Yeah, so on the Type A machines, I've had to print slower down to like 30 uh, millimeters a second. On mm -hmm. the Ultimakers, the BCNs, I think the Tazes as well, are all able to keep a high printing speed while you uh, add a bigger size nozzle. The Ultimaker 3 also has uh, used the eight millimeter nozzle for that. I just wanted to show off what that looked like here. So, so these are the goal. print cores for the Ultimaker 3. Yeah, and so unfortunately these don't come with them. You gotta get these separately, so. Yeah. But that's great because there's a lot of kind of hidden smarts in the print core. Mm -hmm. So instead of having to futz around with unscrewing a nozzle yeah, and definitely. burning your hands, you uh, can just pop out the whole cartridge and pop in a new one. I kind of yeah. prefer the, the cartridge over the nozzle. This is a lot more easier to do. It's more <laughs> expensive, it right but it's definitely more reliable, I would want to say. Oh yeah, it's pretty reliable. Yeah, a lot more easier to swap these out. The only thing missing from their lineup of print cores is the six millimeter nozzle, right. which uh, we definitely needed for mm -hmm. the, um, the all the board mounts for that. Oh, we got a question from Liz Blitz City DIY. She's asking for 2.85 filament. Do you need to use a bigger nozzle? No, nope. you can actually use a very fine nozzle, like use a 0.25 millimeter. So you can get some really good resolution. Uh, we're just using 285 filament because it's just what the Ultimaker is designed for. We have been able to print with a 175 millimeter filament on the Ultimakers, but it's not as reliable. Um, and we just wanted to start using the. Yeah, filament. The, the older ones were able to use the, um, the 1.75, but then okay. as the. What they switched out their. Uh, the, the hardware they're using. Or something, yeah. yeah it, it's no longer as reliable as it once was. So we switch everything to 285. And we've noticed that the ooze control is so much better with the 2.85. 285, yeah. 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 There's still some printers that use it. I mean, we got the uh, Taz little spot that used 285. Mm -hmm. The Sigmas used 285. Yeah. So we're starting to carry both filaments, if yeah. you noticed. Uh, we've gotten some. Yeah, we're not turning away from 175. Yeah, we're actually we're just the... getting some 285. So we're actually. Gonna get some more 175. Yeah, we're getting uh, the Prusa M3K mm -hmm. or MK3. Yeah, we're getting a, just to kind of take a look at it and mm -hmm. not review it, but just to see if we can use it and see yeah, how maybe the we'll multicolor stuff. Maybe we'll stock it. If, yeah. If they allow us to. You know. mm -hmm. So that was down a rabbit hole there with the filaments and stuff. <laughs> but anyway, that's. Uh, our slice settings that we used, again, I mean, it's a, nozzles, it was a big part of why we finished the project so fast. And bigger, yeah, you said it, man. So hopefully that somebody out there will get a kick out of that. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the assembly. What's the, what do you have to do here? So the, the first thing you need to do to prep your um, matrix uh, bonnet mm -hmm. is uh, you first got to start with the jumpers. You're going to connect pin four to pin 18, as shown in the photograph there. And if you flip it around, you actually have to uh, bridge two solder pads yes. together. So what you do is just tin each side of the pad and then heat up one of the sides and then drag some solder over to connect those two. Yeah. And that's uh, required to make the 64 by 64 uh, cooperate. Okay. 
Um, if you don't do that, you'll get glitches. Yeah, it's Ask me how glitching. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you also have to jumper um, pin 4 and 18 as mm -hmm. well. So you have to do that with a little jumper. We're using a silicone wire here. Yeah, I give you the measurements there to uh, have the, uh, the nice length to mm -hmm. connect those two together. Moving on to the LIS3DH, our favorite accelerometer. Yep, just four wired connections. Looks like three volts ground, zero clock, and zero data. Mm -hmm. So there those you go. all connect to the top of the bonnet there. Keep They're nicely the labeled as well, so you can quickly wire those up. Just mm -hmm. follow the pin labels. Power boost. This is what is making this project uh, portable. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to have to solder on a slide set directly on there. I'm going to cut the third leg off and then yep. connect the other two to enable and ground. This will allow you to uh, turn it on and off. And then for the DC plug, we're hooking into the uh, ground and the 5 volt. They're right next to each other. So for this one, we recommend using a thicker gauge. So we're using the 26 gauge silicone coated wires. Yeah, for these this. are great. We have some spools of those as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So got the, the wire lengths required to reach the bonnet. You so will have to wire into the DC jack. We tried wiring into the five volt lines on the, in the available headers, yeah, but it just wasn't, wasn't work. working. So for whatever reason, the way it's routed or, or whatever, um, you definitely have to, it's a requirement. You have to use the DC barrel jack. So use it. So talk about the Megtrix cables. It does come with an IDC cable that's properly sized. You will have to plug it into the right port. There's two ports. There's an in and an out. Just follow um, the one on the far left. If you're looking at the way the text reads, the one on the far left is the input. The one on the far right is the output. And then att attaching the matrix handles to that, you're just going to use the included uh, three millimeter thumb screws. There's some counter sunk holes on the uh, handles that you can just insert into, and they should line up nicely. Just make sure that you're aligning the mounting holes for the buttons the same way. Mm -hmm. One thing to note is, uh, I'll just throw this out randomly, the, the, the handle's mirrored, so you will have to set that up. So I actually uploaded a mirrored version of oh, that, okay. so people won't have to worry Good, about it. Good, because some people probably don't have that in their slicer. I don't yeah. know, we'll see though. That's exactly why I did that, actually. <clears throat> I'll get back to that. Yes, sir. That. Uh, so we got our handles attached. Now yeah, everything attached? starts attaching. For the battery frame, it's a simple little design. I think I grabbed it from one of your sketches. Cool. where you have this nice um, amount of gap so that the so the wire to mm. the battery isn't squished. Yeah. So you just lay that on top and we have these two slits on the sides that allow you to slip through either zip tie or in our case here, we're using twisty ties to uh, hold the battery in place. Beefy battery. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Lamar recommended the 44 milliamp hour battery, uh, but I'm just using the 66 milliamp. So we had, they, they would yeah. both fit because it's just uh, one cell less. There's exactly. three of these cells, it's two of the cells for the 44. Mm -hmm. So the sketches for all of this, the handles, the frame, oh, yeah. everything can be adjusted. I guess you could adjusted. modify it, yeah. yeah the bigger LiPo RC battery or something. Yeah, I should have attached pictures or something, but if you look at the Fusion 360 file there, I have the entire framing of this modeled. So if for whatever okay. reason you need some other, like, you know, you want to have like one on the opposite side of this or two facing, you know, two LEDs on each side, mm. you can connect those together that way. Wonderful. All right. Moving on to that, connecting the... That connects right to the JST port, so there's no soldering required for the battery. That's yeah, nice. you'll just need an additional M3 uh, by five millimeter long screws to attach those. Okay. And we're just using uh, This is nice because there's like threaded inserts in the frame, right? They're like these brass inserts for the M3, so that's mm -hmm. really nice. Yeah, it connects uh, nice and secure. Okay. For the buttons, we're using Quick Connects. If you don't have any, you can just build your own. I just uh, Yeah, I picked these, these up from Radio Shack a way long time ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but we do carry quick disconnect cables in the shop. They're pre-wired for you and pre-crimped with yeah. JST connectors. You won't use the JST connectors, but uh, you actually, can chop the wire off. Yeah, that's actually why I didn't use those, because I wanted to save those for yeah, another Yeah, save project. those for another So you can just build one. your own. I just soldered right to the, uh, to the outside mm. of the connector. Yep. You just hook those up. The mount or the buttons panel mount to the inside there. The tolerances should be... Uh, not so tight where they can just slip in. It's a in. thick handle, so it just kind of fits through there. There's mm -hmm. no room for the washer to fit in or the hex nut. No, there isn't. So you just kind of shove it in there and you're good. Yeah. good you can also ready. twist it in if it's a little bit too, okay. um, yeah. uh, too tight. Yeah, if it's too tight, sand it down. You can do that too. 
Cool. Solder Moving buttons. on to soldering the GPIOs, the air going into pin 19 and 25. And then interestingly for the ground to make it a little bit more easier, we're actually soldering onto the leg of the slide <laughs> oh switch. Oh no, we're out of ground connections. Yeah, so so piggyback off somebody else, like exactly. the slide switch. Yeah, you can kind of see there in the yeah. photo. They don't need thick wires. You can use the 30 gauge because they're just signal, wire, yeah. signal buttons. They're not actually passing too much current through them. Yeah, so everything is neatly tucked inside of the framing around the entire back of that so all yeah, those yeah. buttons can be hidden away. I didn't want to like model a whole back for it just because it would have been pretty big, you know? Uh, it looks pretty nice and slim since you're not even looking at that, mm -hmm. uh, the back side of it anyway. Yep. So you can just thread all those wires and push them into the framing. Yeah. All this stuff well. is just connecting the JST or the LiPo battery into the JST connection on the power boost. Flipping on the switch, hopefully all of your software high. should be done. I definitely recommend uh, following this, burning the SD card, installing all the software through the Pi Zero uh, with a screen and yeah. well, a monitor and a keyboard attached. That way you can troubleshoot everything. But the only way to really know if it's working is if everything's wired up. Yeah, so there is enough room to connect our HDMI connect. Cables. There is. Um, on the inside there, there's enough room to I attach still, yeah. a uh, keyboard, so the USB uh, wireless keyboard to that, so you have room for that. Mm -hmm. And the uh, on-to-go uh, adapter that you need to yep. connect for that as well. You also have room to connect the micro LiPo, uh, or I'm sorry, the micro USB cable to charge. So you can charge up. the battery of USB, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I had something to say, but I forgot it. Darn it. Oh yeah, Wi-Fi is built in. It's the, it's the Pi Zero W. Mm -hmm. It has Wi-Fi built in, so that's one less thing to hook up. Yeah, so technically this <laughs> is the Raspberry Pi Zero W H. Ooh, which, what's the H for? <laughs> it's just headers, so the headers are already included. You don't have to spend all that time soldering all that on there. Yeah. Sweet. And it's 14 bucks, I wanna say. Yeah. In the shop. Yep. Should or you can stock. get it for $5 from uh, fully Without headers, yeah. Bear. Sweet. All right. Well, you can get those parts. You remember, use coupon code MATRIX. You get 10% off your MATRIX. Wrap it up. Or Wrap it up. <laughs> it's done. It? We're done with this week's project. So that's so this week's about project. So it takes about 56 seconds, I think, if you oh, start off with, uh, yeah. yeah. It's kind of a nice little digital timer. I think you... Uh, let all the sand fall down and then turn it around and time to how long it took for that. Mm -hmm. What was it? I counted a minute and 40, yeah. 45, something like that. Yeah, so if anybody has some cool questions about it, this uh, design was actually inspired by uh, the easy, or the speak and spell. Oh, the handles, from yeah. The, uh, from the 80s, I want to say. Mm. And uh, it kind of looks like a Nintendo Switch just because of the colors. It's funny how Nintendo Switch really made it iconic, the two colors. Yeah. So yeah, people were like, hey, it looks like the Nintendo Switch. That's marketing. exactly what we were trying to Great marketing work there, huh? Yeah. Getting colors associated with your brand. That's right. We got those <laughs> colors in the shop as well. They're from Melt Ink, awesome US manufacturer of fine filaments. Very nice. Fine yeah, so filaments. Some comments, uh, Kirby, uh, Kirby was saying that the 285 Ninja Flex is also better. It doesn't flex as much. Yeah, because yeah, it's got a thicker mm -hmm. gauge, I guess you can And I'll post a photo of uh, Project on Prototype, which we'll talk about in a little bit. We are, yeah. The oozing on that is incredible. I've never seen such great <laughs> it's ooze incredible. control on never Ninja seen. Flex, so it does an it excellent pretty, job at 285. Pretty, pretty fresh. Yeah. Never seen it print that well. Yep. Let's see. You have a comment other? from Ab Abri Haram He's saying we have 200. 70 Ks, but only 47 are watching. Thank you guys for watching, and we, we appreciate that. Yeah, well, thankfully, uh, views is not how we pay the bills here. <laughs> oh, no, not at all, folks. <laughs> this is how we pay the bills. Matrix. Thank you for supporting the show. Yes. Okay, well, let's go to the next thing. If anyone has any other cool comments, we'll, we'll get to them as we advance. But for now, what are you prototyping? Let's take a look at what we've been prototyping this week. Super handy dandy mat. Oh my gosh, look at this mat. This is the coolest mat. <laughs> so what is this mat for? You can go ahead and roll. Oh yeah, yeah, so check that. this out, guys. This mat is the premium TPU mat for the Tesla Model 3. Look how good it is. <laughs> Whoops, whoa, where did my phone go? Yeah, they 
they, the, so when we first got this, the this model design, three, got, this um, design got neglected a little bit when they were working maybe, on the center console. Maybe. So as you can see, <laughs> the, one of the problems with the center console design is that there's a bit of a ridge along the mat that is supposed to elevate the phone, but I guess it can slip under the center console. What's going on here? Yeah, so this is the docking station for your mobile devices on there. And like we said, they didn't really do a good job of adding like a edge to it so your phone wouldn't fall through the gap there. It's so, you know, there's they a way to route the cable mm -hmm. and there's all sorts of different cables you can use. Um, but it's kind of kludgy and clunky to kind of Yeah, you wouldn't actually really connect. use this in, in Well, we did for the couple, driving, first couple yeah. weeks and we're like, eh, there's got to be a better way to do this. Mm -hmm. so, so, of course, there's Kickstarters out there like, oh, wireless uh, chi pad. Yeah, so a Launching wireless charger would year, be it's like, excellent. Seriously, we can, this, this, this is, we can. Okay, so there's a like Kickstarter, a may or may not happen, but you can make a solution today. Yeah. Right so, now. So, I've been working on this. Should I show the Snapchat or show the overhead? Uh, probably Snapchat, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at um, what Pedro's been prototyping. This is it? Yes, this is it. So you 3D printed a pad, a replacement pad for the Model 3. And yeah, so it has a built-in Qi charger pad, so no more wires. Super well, simple design. Yeah. It's just standoffs that are on the back and a nice little uh, ledge that's holding the Qi coil in place. Uh, luckily, they did do a good job in routing the nice little channels for the USB. Yeah, the center console is well designed. It's just the pad that that needed a little bit of an extra feature to it. <laughs> yeah, and in use, it works really great. You can just take out your phone, place it right down there, so you're not looking at it while you're driving. And because it is the uh, TPU, it does so how have clean a nice that first layer is. My gosh, it looks it just looks like, finished. Yeah, it doesn't look at like a 3D printed part inside no, it of a doesn't. car. Looks really great. And you also a, added a, an extra bumper where it should be near yeah. the bottom, which also allows you to use larger phones because the other one you kind of couldn't even fit your phone. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they did a, if you switch over to the overhead, they, so let's take a look they, at that. The little ledges, which what you think would hold the phone, actually uh, elevates the phone, which I don't think you would rather you do while you're driving, you know? So that, that's a little off there. Um, it doesn't fit the iPhone, the iPhone Plus, so you can't even fit that in there because of the, the way that the ledge is. What plastic did you use for the so material? This is Cheetah Ninja Flex. Cheetah Ninja Flex. Okay, yeah. so it's a little bit uh, more... So it has a nice little grip to it. Um, Whoa. You can see there, oh. What happened? Hey, it's charging. A little job of charging there. You have your nice ledge it's on there. Very glossy. And everything just connects to the back here using the M3 screws to hook that up in a nice way. Uh, actually, you know, you came up with this idea of having a ledge to actually hold everything yeah. in. Yeah, so you can slot in the, the Qi charging pad itself. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to use any screws or anything to hold it in. It's just being held by that ledge. Yeah. So it's all one piece, really, and mm -hmm. just a couple of hardware screws to secure um, the board to the mat itself. And the mat has these built-in standoffs and you can totally make standoffs and screw into them. No threads needed because uh, just the way the layers, the plastic is layered on top of each other kind of creates a little bit of a guiding edge for your screws. Yeah. It's pretty nice. Uh, Yanni's saying, yeah, it's like the Lego tapes that we made. Yeah, exactly, we printed yeah. it in glass, so it has that clingy surface. Mm -hmm. And it's um, very flexible, uh, but it's not very elastic because it's cheetah. It doesn't need to be elastic in this case. Yeah. And um, this is next week's project. Very easy project. No soldering required because the, it just the right on there, yeah. receiver is right over here. You can sign up for uh, when it's going to be back in stock. It's about $27 for this guy. It also has an, a, an extra USB out so you can charge devices uh, that's not wireless as well. Yeah, so you don't actually you lose a devices. USB connection when you yeah. are using this. So it's really nice. A couple other uh, tricks here and there that we'll talk about next week. Yeah. When we release this. So it's pretty cool. a dual extrusion version of this as we speak. Looks pretty nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kirby's saying, that's a feature. It prevents you from looking at your phone where you have it wired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that could, that's a good feature. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah. yeah, we'll take a look at all this uh, next week. Nice little simple project, useful um, way to charge while you're on the go. Sweet. No, you've got a really cool project you've been working on as well. Yeah, real quick, Ninja Flex, we do stock the filament. So you can check that out. Um, mm -hmm. Got it in 285 and 175. Yep. It's right over here, Cheetah, three millimeter. We're currently out of stock because it's such a great filament. And it's a pretty good price point too. Yes. You're gonna see uh, a little bit more higher in other places that sell it. Mm -hmm. We buy so much of it that we can sell it cheaper. <laughs> yes, so all right, cool. Those. Yeah, it's out of stock. <laughs> Crazy, got of stock. Yeah, uh, so yeah. Really sign up for the notify. Um, Please uh, keep us out of stock. Yes, coupon code it, it, that's always the problem <laughs> or the it's good the problem joke, to have. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Coupon code out of stock. <laughs> like yeah, we're always out of stock. So. Code. <laughs> so. All right, cool. So, what am I prototyping? You want to show that? All right, cool. So this week, um, I, I finally put together a prototype for this project. This is um, a switch-adapted dice roller. So this is for disabled people that can uh, roll dice. So there's a motor inside here and a button, arcade button. So if I push the button, it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> it is supposed to be dice inside there, but I got some Legos in there. Uh, so this is the snow globe that we carry for uh, a couple of the snow globe projects that we did over the winter break. And what's cool about it is um, this little pink ca uh, cap over here has uh, the custom threading for that mates perfectly with the threading on the snow globe. So if we ever have a project that needs a snow globe and you need to kind of twist it on, uh, I can use this here design because it, it matches perfectly tolerances. There is a NinjaFlex um, skin over this platter, this rotating platter here. And that's what rotates. If we pop this off, you'll be able to see what's underneath it. And you might look at this and go, hey, that's reminiscent of last week's project. And it totally is. Um, it is a regular, not regular, but it is a bearing, a radial ball bearing. It's the 608ZZ type. We have a DC motor right here. This is your regular um, six volt uh, DC motor, like for the toy motor. And I got a little Ninja, Ninja Flex wheel. It's a, I got numbers there just to kind of know how big it is. So that spins. And then over here on the platter, if I can get it, you can kind of see that there are these little kind of webbings here. This sort of wiggles uh, edge here. So the bearing fits, the outer ring of the bearing fits in here. And then the Ninja Flex uh, wheel rotates this because it mates with it and that's how it's rotating the platform. So inside here is all the electronics. We have uh, a switch, uh, a TRS jack, which is for adding uh, AT switches to it. So if you wanted a bigger button, you can just plug that in here because that's the sort of standard for assistive tech switches. To power the whole circuit, I'm using a the five volt inverter. This is gonna take the nine volts from the nine volt battery smooth it out and let me um, power the LED as well as the, uh, the DC motor. So that's about it. Oh, there's obviously a slide switch to turn it on and off, which connects to the enable pin. And then the battery, I'm just using one of those nine volt uh, battery connectors and that hooks in directly to the verter, which is a boost buck. So that's pretty much the project. Um, it's again, it's a assistive tech dice roller but I'm sure you can do other things with it as well. Um, everything snap fits together. This is kind of a dual extruded print. Not really dual extruded, it's just kind of like color swap. Uh, and the arcade button just lives in there. So I'll talk about it next week because it'll be a project in, I guess, two weeks now. Mm -hmm. It's portable, it's handheld. Uh, I, I really like the color scheme of it. Yeah, I really like this. What's the name of it? Blue. Yeah, this is called like a... Quincy blue or Quincy something. Blue, yeah. yeah, it's this new color from uh, Melting. Well, it's not new, but it's new to us. So I figured I'd play around with it. Um, so yeah, Kirby's asking, how do you get the nine volt charge battery? Um, I have a nine volt. So the battery I'm using is a rechargeable nine volt battery and this doesn't have a charging circuit. So uh, you won't be able to recharge the nine volt battery. Um, not through there anyway. Not through here. So uh, that's it. There's no breakouts for the USB uh, in any of the enclosure. 
Um, so it's supposed to be kind of a simple project. I'm still uh, kind of tweaking the circuit. Maybe we can use something a little bit less. Uh, you could skip the verter um, and just go directly to the battery, but uh, you might burn out the motor that way because giving it full nine volts might burn it out. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, that's the whole project. The bottom comes out to replace the nine volt battery, right? Yeah, this pops out. You can pop this out. Um, I don't have my spudger tool with me, but you could pop this out if you want. Oh, spudger, spudger. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that later. You don't have to. I might break it or something. We'll do it when the project yeah. is released. It's, just it's all sure. modular. Yeah. Simple, simple to remove. All that. Yeah. Maybe I'll make a battery, uh, uh, like a thing that you can pop this out, like easier oh, to yeah. access, because you do have to kind of, once this pops out, the whole base goes with it. So you might as well kind of pop this whole assembly out. <laughs> we got Honey Co saying it's Lego, not Legos. Lego. Yeah, so there's Lego in there. <laughs> I swear I've heard um, we were in uh, Disney Springs past weekend and people in the Lego, employees in the Lego store we're, were calling Legos. it Legos. Yeah, yeah, so the ones that go to the plane to them as well. I can't hear you <laughs> over my Lego popper. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's kind of a kid's toy, but it's <laughs> I, I find it fun. So hopefully this will make it. some yeah. Hopefully some this will make some um, <laughs> yes Lego AT community folks very happy. Yeah yeah yeah. You know so what? Gavin calls, uh, my uh, my four year old calls it Lego. He won't call it Legos. <laughs> okay. Yep. He was thinking a nine volt battery box with a door. Yeah. So I need to make that door. Yeah. That should be really easy. I love the design of it because it's all parametric and um, I was kind of playing around with the diameters and stuff to get it as slim as possible. Yeah. Works out really well. There is a lot of uh, different UK use cases you can adapt this for, yep. for different projects. Also we got a great mount for the DC motor now. We got a really good mount for the the snow globe as well. Ooh, a piezo uh, to it to see what kind of cool sounds different That would be kind of neat. Make. Yeah, I think they could turn this into a, some sort of game. Wow. Um, obviously you could play Dice, you can play Yahtzee, you can do some math activities as well, maybe. Mm -hmm. A lot of different things with this, I think, you can do. So, pretty fun project, I hope. Yeah. Well, let's uh, coupon code. If you guys want to pick up a DC motor, we got those in shop. They're, they're, they're in stock, I believe. I like John's comment. It isn't underscore Lego, it's uppercase yes. Lego. It's the only way <laughs> to type it out. Joseph is asking why both of us are wearing Snapchat spectacles. Yeah, these are check my out, Check out our Instagram. Check out our Instagram. We post... Yeah, we post snaps all the time. Look, Everything that we do. Yeah, hey, look, there's Gavin in the background. Because you know what? Taking out your phone... You yeah, a lot miss, of times when you're soldering, you, you need miss two hands. When you're in the moment. So, yeah. yeah. So that was pretty neat. This is a clip of just sort of random uh, prototyping and testing things out. That funny stuff that just stuff. happens when we're snapping. Yeah, <laughs> UPS man. Oh yeah, then this past weekend, check out all of our adventures at Disney. We snap. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, we're, We use it as our memory, actually. Yeah. We'll be opening boxes and be like, oh, was that thing included or was that thing there? And yeah. we'll run through our snaps and be like, aha, see, that's, this thing came broken. Memory logger. Let's email it to the manufacturer and be yeah. like, look, dude, this is me opening the thing and it's all broken. Mm -hmm. Yep. Who are they going to believe? My typed words or my actual video of the proof? <laughs> That's great. So uh, this uh, is for liability and insurance. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Or for um, family fun time. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're really nice piece of hardware. Um, we've been using them to document a lot of our work and just sort of day-to-day -day activities. I actually started putting together Alinsky's um, Synth, OK Synth 2, version 2. Again, you could not film this with your sure. phone. I mean, you I could, mean, I guess if you set wouldn't. it up and spend like you know all this, you time. could strap it to your head. Maybe there, there's a lot of GoPro head mounts and you stuff. You could strap it to your head. But yeah. anyway, I've been having a lot of fun building this project and probably put together a build video of that. And that's my snaps of the week, or last week, or two weeks ago. I can't remember. So that's what we're prototyping. Oh. <laughs> Living, uh, or Liz is saying, never want to really go to Disney, but all the snaps really have me going. Yeah, so we go there for inspiration. Uh, Disney is full with, you know, animatronics, nice design, really yeah. cool projects that um, you can definitely yeah. make. Yeah, there's a lot of things uh, out of inspiration. to kind of get out of it. Yeah, inspiration. I love their architecture and stuff. They got yeah. Oh, there's things. always so many, they're always building new stuff on there. Yeah. You know? It's always yeah. cool to check out. 
Uh, next up in the show, we got some shop talk, I believe. Or do you want to go over layer by layer? Just a quick shout out to the GIF explosion. Tutorial. Yeah, we did that last week. Um, no layer by layer this week, probably, maybe. I haven't had time to put one together yet, but if you want to catch up on some older ones, there's still some evergreen ones out there. Snapfit uh, enclosures are always is always my favorite one. Yeah, somebody posted about it. I see a lot of comments coming in for past uh, layer by layers. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching those, and I'll try to make some more as I as I learn some new things. Uh, yes, uh, Oski Tone is Olinsky. Yeah, yes. yeah. Thanks, uh, Oski Tone. <laughs> Oh, and John says, yeah, a lot of Adafruit products are used at Disney. Oh, that's awesome. I definitely notice it. Oh, I should have grabbed, grabbed the snap. Um, I think they were using a Raspberry Pi in one of the displays at the Lego store. Oh, really? Yeah, you could like kind of see, see it from the side. Should have snapped that. That's awesome. And Kirby is going to Disney on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving Day? I don't think we'll be Whoa, there. So yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I think we're I really wish out. we could meet up there. That'd be fun. Uh, we'll be there next month, I believe. Uh, yeah. We're doing Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and yeah, maybe we'll Magic catch Kingdom. up with some folks. If y'all want to, I think twenty third to the twenty fifth, I think okay. in March. If All anybody right. is around, yeah, we'll let you guys know in the Discord chat room. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All let's right. go ahead and look at uh, Shop Talk. Shop Talk. All right, what are we this starting week's, off with? This uh, week's time lapse Tuesday. This is <laughs> too much fun. <laughs> this yeah. Grab Toy Infinite. Um, this is great. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's huge. So it's one? a print and place design. So a couple weeks back we did the dual yeah. grabby hands. Again, print and place design, print and place hinges, optimized for 3D printing with no support material. We had to go this is huge. Uh, extra large. Yeah. For so this we're one. able to fit this on the printer by printing it diagonally. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of not double, but get a little bit more out of your bed if you print something that's long and narrow. If you rotate it at a 45 degree on your bed, or wherever the orientation is, you can get a longer print. So all this mm -hmm. print's folded, right? And when you pop yeah. it off the print, the hinges will all just kind of expand outwards. It's amazing, it's mind blowing. How yeah. is this possible? Yeah, so um, to get the, the full. Oh yeah, that's the filament that we use. We carry lilac or catney purple, as we'd like to, AKA. Um, so catney purple. This is from Melt Ink. We're starting to stock it in 285 flavor. And oh, this thing is so much fun. fun <laughs> print. So one of the tricks that I did on this to make this extra loose was lower the extrusion width down to 3.4. Okay. And that made it so the hinges are um, nice and loose. Uh, the only trick for this though, because it is so heavy on the, uh, near the top here, you do have to sort of like throw it so it has a nice um, uh, extension. Because otherwise, you tried using this. And this is the one I wanted to show for the Ooh, time the lapse because so you got a nice time lapse of it. But yeah, this is no dual extruded, but I broke it. Sorry. <laughs> it's got a lot of weight, and um, yeah. you really have to kind of fling it in order to get the exactly, hinges to all yeah. expand because there's just too much weight mm -hmm. on that plastic. But man, did and this come snaps. out good as a dual extrusion. Yeah, it's really yeah, nice. Ultimaker 3. Yeah. But it takes toy. a while to print. It's oh, like yeah. 12 hours, I think. This yeah. one so took. let's take a look at Thingiverse. This is it on Thingiverse. Thingiverse user Ikoras posted it, remixed it. A lot of makes and a lot of different um, sizes, right? There's a 10 Yeah, there's hinge, actually three different sizes for this. A six hinge. It expands out to 17. That's just the, oh, I didn't inches. even measure how long this That's one the is. six frame. The, this yeah. one's like 21 inches maybe or something. It's pretty long. I can actually. Yeah, so it's on Thingiverse. It. Um, I'll have the link here for you guys. If you want that, if you want this to download that. This one is 20, 27 inches. There it is. Oh, yeah, 27 inches for this one. Uh, Luis is asking what service made the prescription lenses for Snapchat. Is Glass uh, a, a Rochester we, obstacle? Yes, so there are two companies out there. Uh, my wife did the one with um, Glasses USA, I want to say. And then we got ours with Rochester. Let's go back over optical. here. Optical. And they do um, prescription lenses as well as the translations lenses. So once you step outside, it, they change into uh, uh, sunglasses. Yeah, they have a pretty, uh, they have a dedicated So these page. guys specifically 
uh, it looks like they um, on specialize YouTube. on not just Snapchat glasses, but like Google glasses, any other type of like yeah. on your face um, lenses. Yep. So I just thought I'd let you guys know that if anyone is interested in that. And we'll go back to the grab toy and switch the camera. All right, so that's it right there. Um, we have a time lapse Tuesday video, of course. I haven't run it yet. If you haven't watched it, take it a look. You can watch it here. Again, I am sad in that we could not show the dual extruded one. Yeah, I broke it. Because you broke it. Although we could show the clip of it, but you don't have it loaded, do you? No. Nope. Uh, we didn't talk about it. There it's you so can cool see how the hinge is printing. Yeah. Prints in place. Sorry, I want to talk about the one we're not showing. <laughs> the dual mm. extruded one. No purge tower. Uh, no contamination. Yeah. We sent it to Lamar. We sent like three of them or something. Yeah. Actually, we, we, really didn't, we didn't send her the big one because I was scared that she was going to break it. Yeah. You really do need some proper training to use. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we broke it. Yeah. You broke quite a few too. Don't act like right. I broke it. You're right. You broke like, I two, broke like two of them. <laughs> yeah. So the bigger, go bigger, go home or break it and be like, oh, I wasted all this time printing it. You can glue it back together. Anyway, uh, we were supposed to talk about time lapse. Oh, people are thanking us for the Google Glass, or for the glasses link. Yes, they oh. are super handy. Yeah. Um, it takes about a week to do, and it costs like $100, I believe, for the, both lenses. Yeah, it depends on your transition. prescription. But yeah, these are oh, transition yeah, lenses, yeah, yeah. so they're pretty pricey and photochromatic. So mm -hmm. put some UV light on your lens, and it'll darken up nice. Pretty cool. Yeah, again, check out our Instagram. We post. That's all Cheaper post, than Google actually. Glass. I mean, they're not $1,000. Oh they're yeah. $129 for just the... Snapchats. I'm hoping I can get that money back by selling it as a, as a retro. Uh, like, oh, you're selling thing. your Google Glass? You no, I'm just saying I, I hope that one day I could get that money back by That's funny. selling it as a retro. I, I tried using Google Glass for documenting oh, work. Oh, man. It made me but sick. It would, always, oh. uh, it would always overheat and not film. And it's only the 720. These yeah. are uh, 1152 by 1152, so it's yeah. almost 2K, you know? Mm -hmm. um, the resolution. Yeah. yeah. The only difficult part about them is actually editing the content. <laughs> yeah, it's not like an SD card where you just offload it. You kind of have to that's um, where all offload the via goes. Bluetooth, which is a little bit of slowness. Yeah, it, that's where all That's why nobody's using them, guys. That's the, that's yeah. the secret. <laughs> that's why nobody uses it. Okay, so <laughs> I sold mine. That's a good Oh, man, I wish I sold it when the I The Google mine. Glass or the Specs? The Whichever one. Google Glass. Yeah. We still got ours. Yes, they did hurt my eyes when yep. looking up as well. Yeah, same here. Like every time I would take them off, like switching between the tiny little display to world mm. was like, ugh. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. These are just video glasses. That's it. That's all it does. It does one thing very well. Yeah. Except for offloading. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. All right. Well, Dave was saying, yeah, these would be really useful for live action at the beach pics. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they yes. are. Very good for that. All right, well, that was... Uh, oh, yeah, we are going to take a look at the Google Clips, the new camera from Google. Are you kidding? They have a new camera? Yeah. Oh, uh, I didn't even I know that. Who just posted about it. Somebody reviewed it. Oh. It's all in the feed. Interesting. Moving on to this uh, more stuff. Uh, we gotta, is that it? Yeah, I think we got to go, right? right? That's it? Eight minutes? No, I was going to do the last bits of show. All right, Shop Talk. Minutes. Hey, guys, here's an opportunity to win 3D printer and some Adafruit gift cards. This is the video game design contest. Not a contest to, to design video games, but design props from video games. Uh, first prize gets a Robo 3D printer. Second prize gets a whip box. Third prize gets a $50 Adafruit gift card. There are some entries. There are some judge things. I will drop in the link right now so folks can enter that contest. This is run by Pinshape, our friends over at Pinshape. We are sponsoring it. We're doing the $100 gift card for the first prize winner. Uh, scroll up. My... Yeah. There it is. I Mention that it is indeed a hundred dollar gift card, not fifty dollars. It's a hundred dollars for first prize and fifty dollars oh, gotcha, gotcha. for third okay, prize. Okay. Yeah, so we can do that. That's fine. And there are some uh, entries. You can see all the entries here. There's 38 days left. So check out the link. Um, you know, there's some rules and stuff, but I don't know what they are. <laughs> so you can check those out if you are, in fact, interested in them and winning. So check those out. Okay. Next thing I want to share is just a little sneak peek of a very awesome project. I can't wait to start building oh my myself. God, yes. Oh my god. This is the out. NeoPixel dialer from Liz Clark. Liz City DIY. She's in the chat room. So I can't wait for this. This is this is the back end admin, so it's not published yet. Sorry for spoiling Sorry it. Sorry for spoiling <laughs> it, but YouTube video is probably up already. I see a YouTube link. 
And I just can't wait to build one, so, you know, no pressure or anything. <laughs> no, I don't mean to pressure you. Take your time. This is going to be a great project. Yeah, it's so, so awesome. Okay. And again, that's from Liz Clark, Blitz City DIY. All right, let's, let's do a real quick community makes. I'm going to run through this real quick. These are some things from the communities. Uh, the first one up is Highland Shield from the video game Zelda. Check wow, this so out. This was printed on the CR10? This was printed on a CR10, yeah. Um, I love the way this came awesome out. Awesome print. Craft sticks didn't quite fit, didn't quite fit, so he sanded them down. He um, didn't think it'd be sturdy, but it ended up being really nice with Gorilla Glue. And all this stuff was printed in PLA. We use Ninja Flex for the, like, the little color bits, but he was able to use a hot gun, uh, a heat gun, to heat it up a little bit and then curve those, because hmm. it is a curved design. Yeah. He did a really good job on, on sealing the seams as mm -hmm. well. I can barely see that Way seam. better than the, what I tried to do. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Huge! Cool. Got another make over here. This is the wire spool holder. Oh, wow. This is last week's project. That's good. And um, this person here on Thingiverse, Evie Holtz, built it. So thank you for sharing that. He printed it on his Ultimaker 2 Extended. Awesome. Another one, this is from Chris Schmitz, who is working on a, a Trellis sound box, which makes like these little bloopy noises. Wow. And it's, uh, he's been using a lot of the techniques that I uh, share on my Lair by Lairs. And it's just a really cool project. Can't wait to share the full entire project of it. How do I hit uh, watch again? There it is. This is on Vimeo, so I'm like new to it. But anyway, very, very cool work. I love the purple color. And um, I, I think like he'll release all the code and files to build this uh, really nice shortly. nice mounting techniques that he's using there. Mm -hmm. I really like the door on the bottom too, which yeah, we I need should. To make that. I need to start making definitely these. Definitely use for that nine yeah. volt battery. It's a pain to kind of take apart your whole thing just yeah. to get a battery. Yeah. Look at these feet too. I yeah, like the way that the uh, countersunk um, screws are on the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Really awesome. Very cool, right? Good job, Chris. I'll Very share that link in the description of the video. So you can check that out. This one is from Jim Scuba. He is he is this. releasing a wow. sort of a two-part video series. It's already released, actually. Two-part series on how you can build animatronics using Arduino. So cool. So check it out with Jim. Of course, he is uh, making awesome projects. This is his Tiki head so awesome. inspired by the Tiki Room from Disney, yeah, yeah, yeah. Disney World, Disneyland. Mm -hmm. One of those. Yeah, John said they're just uh, they started expanding Tiki. Yeah. So check it out. I'll have the links in the description. We'll also be sharing it on the blog. Very in-depth uh, walkthrough of building and assembling your own animatronic system. Very awesome. Awesome work, Jim, and thank you for sharing it with mm. us. We got another one. This is awesome. This is from Blade Runner. This, this is the is Memory really cool. Maker Controller. So this is from Caitlin's dad. Shout out to Caitlin's dad. He does, he, I think he, he does like a project every does, week. Yeah, he does he so does like many at least one a week, wearables yeah. and awesome, cool, fun projects. So this is using Circuit Python and the Circuit Playground Express. And it's you twist these dials and push these buttons to control a 360 video. And very reminiscent to uh, the uh, prop in the new Blade Runner movie. So it's really cool. And uh, he's just watching one of Phil's 360 tests on YouTube. And he's able to kind of twist this thing and push these, these buttons to uh, manipulate um, the 360 video. So essentially making a Blade Runner memory maker controller. So here he is actually kind of moving things around. So this is an Unstructables. You can check it out. Um, the whole build is here on Unstructables made out of, I wonder if, I wonder if Caitlin's dad could upload this to the pin shape contest. Does, oh. does it, is there a rule that it has to be 3D modeled? Because maybe he could use a 3D printer. So here's the whole build. So very awesome. Check it out. Caitlin's dad on Instructables and YouTube. Very cool. Well, that's pretty much it for the show, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. And we made it. We made it to the show. Yay. Don't forget, the coupon code is MATRIX. It's good till 11.59 uh, Eastern yeah. Time, PM. And we also have some shows later today. We have Ask an Engineer and Show and Tell. Show and Tell starts at 7.30 PM Eastern Time followed by Ask an Engineer at 8 p.m. Yeah, quick shout out to um, Ashton here who's saying he has a really cool Windows 10, uh, Windows phone, running Windows 10. Definitely 
uh, show up to the show and tell. It's uh, Google Hangouts. Cool. That's awesome. Post the link right around 7.28 so you can join in and show off that awesome project. Cool. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Don't forget. Coupon code. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. John Park is on tomorrow at 4 p.m. Yes. Eastern time. Last week, he was showing us how to do some panel mounted stuff, uh, show, sharing how to use a punch and die mm -hmm. setup. Very, very cool for making uh, like kind of aluminum enclosures yeah. and laser cut enclosures. Very, very cool stuff. Thanks for doing Park. some uh, lock picking as well. Lock picking stuff. So coming up is, I think, some Ada Box 07 stuff. 007. Mm -hmm. So definitely Spy in. themed, maybe? Yep. He'll also have some coupon codes as well. That's right. So if you missed out today, you can get tomorrow. Get mm -hmm. your order in. Yeah, that's the uh, only bad thing about uh, having the show on Wednesday because all of the new products are released. Um, Wednesday night. Wednesday, Wednesday night, evening. yeah. yeah. So oh, well, anyway, definitely handy for picking up another coupon code for the next day. That's right. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Good luck with all your maker endeavors. And um, don't forget to make a great day, guys. We'll see you later tonight. But until then, I already said the thing. Bye, everybody. Have a great one, guys. Bye.